Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a makeup look which is based on a look that I did on Cara Delevingne during the Cannes Film Festival. Now that was back in May and lots of you requested a tutorial. However, I felt that it was better to wait till now because it's a really classically autumnal or fall makeup look. It's a very dark berry lip and black liner. So I feel like it works better now. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I'm sorry I haven't been uploading as much as normal. I've been involved in two incredible projects, neither of which I can talk about yet, but it's taken up so much of my time. And even when I felt I have had time to make a video, I haven't had time to work on editing and all of that. So now that things have calmed down more, I'm going to be able to upload more regularly. So thank you for sticking with me. And... On that note, we have raised so far over $10,000 for the charity Plan International Girls Fund. All of Every time you watch a video, there's advertising on my videos now, in case you didn't know, notice this, I've never done it before, but it means that all of the money, 100%, is going to Plan International. And despite the fact that I've not been uploading as much as I usually would, we've still raised over $10,000. So I'm very excited. I can't tell you how amazing it was to write my first check when the money started coming in. I also would love you to subscribe to my channel, which I never usually say ever in videos, but I don't want you to miss any videos because every time you watch, we give more money to charity. So let's keep going together and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So on to the look. Now with dark lips, Lots of you will be like, no, 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 I can't wear them. My lips are uneven or they're not full enough. I believe you can wear dark lips, obviously with a few tricks and tips. And it's something that you can adapt. So you can, there's different levels of dark lip. And also it depends on the makeup that you put with it. So I'm going to talk you through all of that. The first thing to say is that you do need to have a nice even base. So I'm actually going to use a more medium to full coverage foundation, although I'm going to thin it out. The one I've chosen actually is the Rimmel Lasting 25 Hours. Is that 25 hours? Who's going to wear makeup for that long? Um, this one I like because although it is long lasting and it is more of a matte finish, you can thin it out and it's one that doesn't uh, oxidize too much. Uh, it always looks too pale obviously when I start around my chin area because that's my darkest bit of skin. So I'm gonna buff this all over. And the reason I'm using something which has got good coverage and which is buildable is because when you are wearing very dark lipstick and adding blush and sort of heavier makeup all over or darker colors, if you have a lot of shadowiness un underneath your eyes or just generally in your face or pigmentation or redness, a dark lip will almost emphasize them and because we're making the main statement of the look the dark lip we really don't want anything to distract or detract from that so I'm going to start with a thin layer all over and then I've just gone over again and put a second coat on just in certain areas but this you can feel it setting and for a drugstore or a high street foundation, I do really like this one. I think it's very flawless. And personally, I find that it doesn't oxidize in terms of color, which is nice. So for concealer, I'm going to use Tani Dal Ultra, and this is the Camouflage. This is a little bit more intense, so it's very, very covering. I find because it's very elasticy, it's good to apply it with a small beauty blender or something similar, or you can pat it with fingers. And I'm just gonna go underneath my eyes with this. You need the tiniest amount. I can't even tell you how little you need. In fact, I've just put too much on there. So I'm gonna use the clean side, but it's quite a plasticky, elasticy formula. So you will need to push it into the skin a small amount rather than buff and blend. It needs to set again. And then on a smaller brush, I'm just covering a bit of pigmentation there. Side of my cheek. And the foundation has pretty much covered blemishes, except for this thing here. Oh, oh 
Oh no, I had some on my finger. Damn. Got too much on now. Okay, let me just pop that in. Ah, making a mess. There we go. So because this is a matte foundation and full coverage, I'm going to add a little bit of highlighter just to keep the skin a bit more glowy. Not using tons because I'm going to use a powder highlighter as well later, but I do love that thing where there's layers of highlighter, thin layers. This is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Pearl, an old classic favourite of mine. And then just using some powder to set. Using quite a small brush because I want to be very precise with the powder. Because it's a matte finish, I don't feel like I need it all over, particularly here where it feels like it's definitely set and it's pretty matte. Matte with a slight glow. But under my eyes will need a little dusting. Okay, so onto eyes and I'm going to start, I did my eyes, my base first because there isn't any really dark shadow in this look. So I feel like um, I'm not gonna make a mess of my base. So I'm gonna use this Fenty Beauty highlighter to start off with. Haven't actually tried these yet apart from on my hands. Haven't tried any of the makeup. I know it's been a big, big launch last week. However, I am gonna use the foundation maybe in the next video I do just so I can try it out live on camera. But I did feel that this was really relevant for today's look because there was a wash of a very light colour over the le over the eyelids first. So obviously you'll adapt it to suit your skin tone, but it's just basically a kind of neutral shadow all over first. So I'm going to use this one, which is Lightning Dust on the entire lids. Oh, actually, I was going to first use a little bit of primer. I'm going to use, I'm trying out a few new things today. So this is the Marc Jacobs Coconut Primer. So smooth that on first. So then on with lightning dust. So I'm going to use this all over. It's a nice creamy highlighter. And this side is not too shiny. There's two sides in the highlighter palettes. One side is extremely bling. And the other side's much softer. The eyeshadow in this look was very natural rosy tones because the lip is so strong and that's obviously the statement and also the liner. I really just went for more of a rosy lid as I'd call it. Now the colors that you choose for that will really depend on your skin tone. The palette I've chosen has a really good variety of shades in and I've chosen this palette because I did an Instagram story this week with all of the new eye palettes for fall that have come into the studio and I asked my followers which ones do you want to see in a tutorial and it was a kind of tie between the NARS palette and the Huda Beauty Rose Desert not Desert Rose I've got that wrong Desert Dusk palette so I've gone for the NARS one, didn't really have the right shade, but this one does, the Huda Beauty one, is really kind of the sorts of tones that I definitely use that day. So for me, I'm going to use this champagne color with the pink and then this plummy color, which is called Royal. If you've got a darker skin tone, then I'd say you could use the Royal, you could use this color Oud or this reddish color, which is called Saffron. So it's really just about creating a nice rosy lid. So I'm gonna start by using the champagne color, which is called Cashmere. Actually, I'm gonna use my little mirror. How lovely is this mirror? This is from my vintage collection and um, it's a 1940s one. Because also I forgot to say that I'm shooting in a different part of my studio today, so I don't have my usual mirrors all around me. So I'm going to use the champagne colour across the lid. Has quite a lot of shimmer in. Then I'm going to add a touch of angelic, which is a slightly more pinky colour. This is very subtle, so if you don't see what I'm talking about in terms of pink, don't worry. And then now that I've got that all over my socket, I'm going to add Royal. And I really only did this at the outer edge on Cara, this sort of 
plump tone. And a little bit into the socket line. And because it's blending well in with the cashmere colour, I don't have to do too much blending there. It's kind of melting into that colour, transitioning really nicely. When you're going to be doing a dark lip, you can take your time with your eyes, like just do maybe some eye makeup and then when you finish your lip, you could always go back in and add more color in the socket because it's so hard to tell when you're wearing such a statement lip, how made up you want the rest of your face to be and what's gonna suit you. So I always like to get on some of the makeup for the eyes and even some of the blush, but not finish the makeup entirely until the main statement is on. Underneath my eyes, I'm using Royal again to give a sort of rosy feeling under there. The shades that I've used from this palette are quite metallic, which if you don't want metallics, you can still do this look with similar shades, but more of a matte texture. So now I'm gonna do black liner. There was a kitten flick with this look. It was quite thin at the inner corner, almost nothing there. And then at the outer edge, it lifted up really from underneath, so I'm almost going on the inside of the edge of the lash. And then it became more flicked there. And then I had it quite thick at that outer corner. So once I'd drawn the kitten flick, I just really filled in this corner. Because the shot I've got of Cara is really from the side and you can see it's really filled in underneath. I've got a slightly different eye shape. I'm a little bit more hooded, so. I have to go a little bit longer there and then just blend that in. So next I'm going to curl eyelashes and lots of black mascara. Tons and tons, I still think I'm going to have to put on a few false lashes because I do not have eyelashes like Cara. Like her eyebrows, she has amazing eyelashes, very thick. Okay, I've put some individual lashes on. I've little clusters. I've put about six on each eye just to give me that Cara lash. I didn't film it because I've made a video on how to apply individual cluster eyelashes. So I'll link to it below. Now while the glue's drying, because you can still see the glue, I'm gonna move on to brows and I'm going to give myself a good filled in brow. Not crazy filled in, but polished. I'm going to brush down at the top and just make sure that I get that high point in. And then just step back, because often when you step back, you really can see the overall look not just focusing close in on the brow. So this one I think needs a bit more at this inner corner. Doesn't feel quite as dense as the other one. So next I'm gonna do contouring, but very, very subtly, what I would call chic contouring. I'm going to use one of these new By Terry palettes because they come in lots of different colorways and I find the colors are really chic and quite natural looking. This one is good. They all have a sort of highlighter color in the middle and more of a contour or powder color at the outer edge. And you can see this one, for my skin tone, is gonna to be very natural. So I'm going right underneath the top of the cheekbone, keeping it quite high. But I put a lot on and it's quite hard to make a mistake. I used a tiny bit of uh, this with Cara. 
She has very high cheekbones and I need to shape mine in a little bit, but because I've got a very thin face, I can't do too much of this either. If you have a rounder face and you, you've got more scope to contour. I'm also gonna use the center of the palette to pick up the highlight. Just to use on top there. This is nice because it's very brightening, but it's not glittery. So you can use quite a bit. Again, you can get away with using a lot of this because it's very finely milled. You can see that it's picking up the light, but I can tell you it's not a glittery, disco-y type of highlight. So before I do my blush and finish my eyes, I'm going to do the Statement Dark Lip. And I recommend you do this because you really can't tell how much blush you're gonna need until you get that lip on. And you will need blush because look at my face now. When I've got my lip on, I'm gonna look drained, I promise you. So I'm going in with a very dark lip. You don't have to go as full on as this. This is a really dark black current. This is by e.l.f. And I'm going to start by applying it with a lip brush. Or you can do it straight from the bullet, but I'm gonna to have to make adjustments because my lower lip is very thin. My upper lip is has always been much fuller, but um, I, if I use a dark lip, I always need to fix that. So look how dark this is. To start with, I'm just gonna follow my natural lip line. do it quite roughly so it's very rough and a blot look how mean I look with this dark lip and these small lips but I honestly think you can work whatever lip shape you've got you can get away with it with the right amount of blush and by using a pencil so I've got this little mean mouth going on here now I'm gonna shape this is a Barry M pencil Because I'm doing this with a matte lipstick, you can get away with overdrawing. If you have naturally full lips, you can use more of a satin finish. But if you're doing what I'm doing, which is hugely overdrawing, then you do need to work with m more matte textures or at least blot the textures. Because then you don't get to see, otherwise you see a shadow and a highlight where you've overdrawn. And that's just a dead giveaway. Smile when you do the lower lip. You can hear a lot of noise. There's actually a pub the other side of the back of my studio and I think they've got a pub quiz tonight. But I can hear a lot of noise. Then step back and then do all your perfecting. once you've checked out the shape. And don't forget the inner corners as well. And if you are someone that needs to overdraw to wear a dark lip, it's worth spending a little bit of extra time tweaking. Or if you've got naturally full lips, then you can just do that, which you're very lucky. I'm just gonna go over now with another layer. So next I'm gonna use blush. I'm gonna use a bluish pink on myself, which will tie in well with this lip color. And you can see I really need it. And I just put it on until everything pops into balance which is there. See the difference? Just suddenly, eyes brighten up, lip colour makes sense. No more, no less than that. And on my eyes actually, I'm going to go back in with the royal colour from the palette. 
and add a bit more there, the outer edge of that plummy shade. And as a final touch, I'm going to use the more glittery shade from the Fenty Beauty highlighter. The glittery shade is called Fire Crystal at the inner corner of my eyes. So that's the look I did on Cara. I think for me it's a really nice win fall or winter's night out makeup. I feel very vampy, very glamorous, but I don't feel over like caked in makeup. It actually feels really nice. This foundation feels really nice. And you can dial it up or dial it down. If you don't want to wear a really strong lip, you could do a similar shade, but make more of a stain of it. So maybe use more of a sheer texture and blot it a little bit more. But you can wear dark lipstick with thinner lips or uneven lips. Look, I am proof of that. And because I've put it all over and I've created such a good stain with the pencil, I know that I can feel confident that this isn't gonna come off and expose the fact that I've got a very thin lower lip. And that's it. And I think the noise from the pub is getting louder and louder and louder. And there's some really bad singing going on in there, which I know I can match. So maybe I'm just gonna go and join them. If you can't beat them, join them. Hope that was helpful and I'll see you soon.